my funnily lovelies. Today I'm going to go into what I have been eating in order to lose over a hundred pounds. But before I get into that, please check out my disclaimer. You read it? Promise not to sue me? Wonderful! Now in case this is your first time watching my videos, my name is Kirsten. My channel is called Funnily AIP because AIP stands for Autonomy Protocol. And the way I came across it was in a funnily way. It was definitely in an unexpected way and I was a silly mess while trying to figure it out and still am pretty much a silly mess trying to figure it out. Uh, but it is what it is. Being on Autonomy Protocol did help me lose over 100 pounds. Actually 125 to be you know, correct. Uh, <laughs> I said actually, but I was going to say to be exact. But anyway, uh, it's it's really been very beneficial to my life and for getting my autoimmune disorder, which is called hygienitis superativa, into remission. And I can't, I mean, not full, full remission because sometimes I still get flare-ups, which can be triggered by hormonal reasons or by stress or by other genetic factors. But for the most part, I'm mostly pain-free and autoimmune protocol helped me to get there. Now, it wasn't all about the weight. Uh, I did get on autoimmune protocol mainly to get my flare-ups which are painful boils that I get from head to toe into remission and the weight was just kind of like a happy side effect to be honest. I went from being 325 pounds size 26 28 to being pretty much 200 pounds size 10 to 12. Um, I gained 55 pounds of that weight back and I plan on losing it once more by the summer of 2019. So continue to follow me to see if I do make it or even come close. And in order to do that, please press that subscribe button down below as well as like this video if you're in, you know, if you think I'm doing a good job or, you know, you're going to commend me or cheer, cheer me on to try to get there. Uh, I really do uh, think I'm going to be successful because autoimmune protocol is definitely like the only way that I personally can lose weight of every other way every other method does not give me the same results so getting into what I eat every day now if you go to any other website blog whatever they have different uh, breakdowns of avoiding autoimmune protocol. I take it a bit of a step further. I restrict even more processed ingredients. Um, pretty much if it's not 100% whatever that product's supposed to be, be it chicken, vegetables, uh, fruit juice, I usually don't consume it. But that's just me. Um, but I mean, it depends on what level of autoimmune protocol you're at, how seriously you're going to take it. Um, like I said in my disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional, so I suggest you consult one if you have any other questions because they'll be able to fill in any of the gaps or any sort of um, questions that you may have if they're an expert in that field and if they have a positive and good bedside manner in order to assist you with that. So keep that in mind before I get into this. Now, getting into uh, what I eat on a daily is going to be interesting because it varies. Uh, you can easily get sick of things on autoimmune protocol. That's why there are a lot of cookbooks out there. Um, if you go to my blog, I have a recommendation of various cookbooks and other books that are about my autoimmune disorder that you might be interested in reading. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, there's a lot to choose from. But personally, I find that most cookbooks are too complicated. I mean, there are these recipes that have over like a dozen ingredients and a dozen steps and they don't even seem like they're that good. Like, I mean, <laughs> they're nothing compared to eating a hot dog or pizza or something. I'm sorry. I don't want to go through all that trouble for having something that's just, meh, okay, you know? So for me personally, I keep it simple. That's the way I was able to stay on autoimmune protocol for so long. That's the way I still am able to be on autoimmune protocol for so long is by keeping it simple. The simple things that I do is I run to Kroger or Whole Foods and I will grab a rotisserie chicken. Uh, the, the naked chicken by Whole Foods is super plain. I'm not going to lie. So occasionally um, I will have one with black pepper. I don't seem to have a very strong reaction or flare up from black pepper. Um, if you want to know if you have a, re a reaction or flare up to something, keep a food journal. That's what most doctors would recommend, but, rec the, but see if your doctor recommends it too is keep a food journal, a food diary, and it takes three days for something to go through your entire body system, and then it will manifest itself in a flare-up if your body does, in fact, react to that ingredient. So please note that, because I have discovered so many things that I react to just by keeping a food diary, even without the list, because sometimes a list, even though you may come across one that has a lot, it may not be a comprehensive enough one 
for your specific autoimmune disorder. Uh, let's see. So like I said, I will go to the store. I will buy a chicken. Uh, usually I will eat the dark meat part portions of the chicken first uh, for my meal. Depending on how hungry, I'll eat either a thigh and a wing or two thighs and two wings for one meal. Um, and then later on, I'll eat the back half of the chicken and then I'll eat the uh, anterior or front part of the chicken or the white meat part. Um, I'll probably have half of it for one meal and half for the other. Um, so I will usually go through a whole chicken maybe in a day or maybe within a span of uh, 48 hours. That's my typical way of eating a chicken. And a chicken, with it being a, a, a holistic chicken or one that's organic um, and prepared in a very healthy way, uh, it's going to cost you at least $10, which to me isn't really a bad price because that's pretty much all I'm going to eat aside from like maybe an additional side like a sweet potato or uh, some juice or something or vegetables or whatever have you, whatever I'm feeling like that day or a piece of fruit. Um, I'll have that with the meat. So really it's running me about six or seven dollars, which is pretty much the cost of a combo meal at any standard fast food place. So it's really not that expensive if you consider that. Now, the other thing that I would eat aside from a, a rotisserie chicken that's organic and cooked with nothing but maybe sea salt or salt and pepper or something simple that's autoimmune protocol friendly at maybe an additional stage because black pepper is a reintroduction uh, ingredient, I think stage one or stage two. So, you know, you can't, if you have reintroduced it and you can't have it, then the salt and pepper chicken would be safe for you. But if you are starting off fresh, very beginning and not introducing anything, the sea salt rotisserie chicken is available at Kroger. And that one is a pretty sizable chicken and it does last me a bit. And I do like that it has the sea salt flavor throughout so that it is well seasoned and I'm able to use it in my other recipes such as my chicken salad. I have a creamy avocado puree chicken salad that I make uh, when I want to have something different. I also put uh, that, I pull that chicken um, or chop it up and I utilize it in other recipes that will be posted on my blog. If you'd like to visit my blog, it'll be in the link down below. Also, please subscribe to my email list. It will have very new updates of everything I'm posting, not only on YouTube, but on my other social media and on my blog. So you will be the first to know, as well as for my future free giveaways. Being on my email list and being subscribed will help to give you extra entries into those contests to up your chances of getting something for free, which, of course, who doesn't love free? But anyway, and of course, among those free things is other stuff that I do eat, which would be uh, plantain chips if I'm having that as a snack. Or let me see what other AIP snacks do they have. There's a lot of like dried fruits. Um, they're like uh, fruits. Uh, they call them fruit rolls or something. They're like different things. Of course, I have to be particular about my fruits because with my autoimmune disorder, I can't have something called brewer's yeast. And brewer's yeast is contained in various berries, so I have to be cautious of that. And pretty much brewer's yeast is present in a lot of dried fruits, which is what I'm supposed to do avoid as well. Also, dried fruits are very high in sugar compared to their counterparts, which have the original water and the pulp and everything if you're eating like a regular apple versus a dried apple or strawberry such and so on and so forth, then you have to really be careful uh, about your sugar intake. And sugar is something you have to definitely watch when you have hydrogenide superativa like I do. But other than that, I mean, I will occasionally eat strawberries. I will occasionally eat other fruits. I definitely try to keep them both brewer's yeast free and autoimmune protocol by eating things like cherries or, let me see, apples or watermelon. I eat a lot of uh, watermelon or honeydew melon. So there are a lot of other fruits that I do choose to consume that are fresh. That will be something else, too, that I consume on a daily basis. So on a typical day, I will wake up. For breakfast, I'll probably have fruit or leftovers. I'll either, either have leftover chicken salad or leftover chicken from the night before from the rotisserie chicken. Or I'll have like, I don't even, even know. It depends on how hungry I am or how much time I have. But nine times out of ten, I'm usually going to have fruit. I used to make smoothies for myself. Now that's just too time consuming. I will usually uh, chop up watermelon the night before and put it in a container. And I'll grab that on the way out the door and I'll eat it when I get to work. Uh, let me see what else do I eat. I'll eat an apple or I will eat plantain chips. I try to go with the Artisan Tropic brand of plantain chips because they're not as greasy as most. And that will be my breakfast pretty much because I usually finish 
work around like the early, uh, really late morning kind of thing. So I'm not going to be going too long before I can eat again. And when I eat again, like I said, I'll have either a rotisserie chicken or I will go home and I will cook something with grass fed beef or I will have my batch cooking recipes, which I have the seafood soup with broth, which I use for another recipe um, or other recipes because I'm going to be probably utilizing broth for other recipes in the future. But there's also uh, my my beef stew recipe. There's there I have several crock pot recipes because I love my crock pot. I have a really big crock pot. I can't even tell you how big it is, but it's pretty sizable, and it definitely can feed a whole family with just cooking it once overnight. Everybody can get a, a one or two servings of it, which is always good when you're trying to feed a lot of people. Um, but if it's just me, which usually it is, because I mean I cook for myself most of the time, uh, then it's something that I can eat off for at least maybe three or four days, which is always good, especially when I know things are going to be hectic and crazy and busy, I will definitely throw something in the crock, crock pot, have it ready in the morning, maybe eat some of it for breakfast, but definitely eat it for lunch and dinner for the next several days to come. Uh, crock pot recipes are really great for when it's rainy. Uh, you don't really feel like cooking when it's rainy. I guess that's why a lot of like restaurants and fast food places get more business on those days is people don't feel like cooking. And the same thing is with autoimmune protocol. When you have something in the crock pot you don't really feel like you're cooking and so when you have that ready then you lessen the temptation to go to a fast food place and you also get a really nice savory meal that's usually like in a soup form or liquidy form that's perfect for a rainy day that really just hits all those cravings that you may be having um because who wants to be sick when it's rainy and the way to increase i mean decrease your <laughs> chances of sickness which increase when it's cold and wet and everything's just soggy um is by having soup and eating things that are warm to keep your throat warm and taking in those vegetables because a lot of what i make has those fresh um, whole food vegetables that are within autoimmune protocol and those are really great uh, to have in order to keep your immune system up to keep your uh, body in optimal condition so that you don't get sick that's really important to have in your diet now from a day to day uh, let me see when it's not rainy I won't really have a lot of crock pot meals and like I said I will eat a lot of chicken um, occasionally I'll eat like grass-fed burgers I will wrap them in lettuce, like these the giant lettuce leaves, or they have like red lettuce leaves or something at certain stores. I'll wrap them in that. Um, I'll have them with my avocado puree as a sort of condiment and eat them with radishes or onions or other avocado uh, or cucumber. Uh, I have like a little wave cutter. I'll make them like a, a knockoff pickle kind of thing, although I can't have anything fermented because brewer's yeast free, you can't have anything fermented. And uh, I'll just have it for like the added crunch, which also radishes kind of satisfy that as well. So that's one thing I do when I eat grass-fed burgers. There's also, I make grass-fed tacos. I eat them with my favorite product, which is the coconut wrap as my sort of bread or AIP bread, even though it's not a real bread. It's just, it's kind of like a kind of like a fruit leather, uh, to be honest, but it's it holds up well uh, for the hot uh, beef that has all the juices that are coming out. It'll hold up, hold up, hold it up as you're consuming it and not get too soggy as long as you eat it fast enough. Uh, so, you know, it works out well with uh, the coconut wraps with that. That's pretty much one of the only things that I use my coconut wraps for, or I also use them uh, if I cut them into strips as like toppings for making a salad. Salad is another thing that I will crave on a very hot day. Uh, I used to be able to have like tuna steaks and uh, other fatty fish with that. But I have learned that I cannot have that because of your receipts free. Uh, you're supposed to avoid fatty uh, fish and products because it can trigger a flare up. So I have changed to going back to, uh, let's see, going back to chicken, chopping that up and using that for a topping for my salad or also uh, getting like a steak if I can spring for it, getting like a ribeye steak or something and then chopping that up and using that to top off my salad. I am definitely a meat eater. I have to eat at least one sort of meat or one huge hefty amount of fish every day. If I'm not eating beef or chicken, I'm most likely going to be eating uh, fish, which would be either wild caught salmon or wild caught flounder or wild caught, let's see, tilapia uh, or wild caught cod. Uh, Pollock, 
Uh, there are lots of fish to choose from when you're going to grocery stores. Uh, there are a lot that are offered at Whole Foods, that are offered at Kroger, that are offered even at uh, Walmart as well. Um, I try to definitely get the ones that are purely wild caught with no additional preservatives, nothing to retain freshness. Um, I try to be as natural as possible. I also eat crustacean with lobster, crab. I eat a lot of crab sometimes if I can afford it. I'll get like the crab legs and I'll heat them up in the microwave and I'll just eat them just like that. I'll usually have them with a fruit juice so I don't have too much sodium that I'm consuming at once. And that's pretty much about it. I just rotate it all. I rotate the recipes that I make. I will have some stuff pre-made. Um, I have different snacks, usually fruits with like my tiger nut butter that I make. Um, there are dressings I have made, other condiments that I have made that I will use to enhance the flavor of whatever meat I'm consuming. The main meats that I consume on a weekly basis or fish and crustacean that I consume as well are grass-fed beef, rotisserie chicken, organic chicken, salmon, shrimp, crab. Those are the top five uh, meats or, fee or seafood that I consume on a weekly basis. Occasionally lobster. I'm really not crazy about lobster. I usually have to have lobster with shrimp. I can't have it by itself. Nah, what can I say? I'm just not into that hoity-toity stuff. Uh, but let me see. What else? Um, that's about it. I've had bison before, um, but people keep changing their labeling on their grass-fed bison. They keep changing it to natural bison, which weirds me out. Um, and then there's also like natural porks and stuff. I'm interested in utilizing that. Even though I'm not really supposed to have a lot of pork, I think it's okay on occasion. I've never been a big pork eater previously, so I don't really miss it that much. But in order to mix it up, I will probably try ground pork in the future too. Uh, but for the most part, that is about it. That, that pretty much constitutes everything. Oh, and grass-fed lamb. If I can uh, be around uh, grass-fed lamb, which is sometimes offered at Whole Foods, is more consistent offered at Sam's which I hardly ever get to go to because uh, I have to usually eat, like shop with a friend or something uh, then I will definitely get it because I do love grass-fed lamb but still at the same time you know you have to do what's with it whatever is in your budget so largely what I eat is in my budget uh, the cheapest price I've been able to find grass-fed beef is at Aldi especially when it's a family pack the family pack makes it less than five dollars a pound uh, normally it's priced around Five twenty-five, five twenty-eight a pound in my area. So I eat a lot of ground beef, but that you get sick of that texture. So I like to change it up and get different cuts of meat, which are available at Whole Foods. Or like I said, I'll eat chicken or some kind of fish. I really do rotate those top five out that I mentioned earlier, and then I eat them with autoimmune protocol fruits and vegetables that I can have. Also, brewers yeast free fruits and vegetables that I can have, and that's about it. I mean. I consume a lot of smoothies, like I make watermelon smoothies, um, sometimes like pineapple orange smoothies if I can. Uh, there are lots of different smoothies. I'm probably, it's still, the fence is still on uh, oranges because I think they might be brewer's yeast, uh, they might contain brewer's yeast, they might not be brewer's yeast free, but at this point there's a whole lot for me to figure out as far as my dietary needs, as far as brewer's yeast free goes. I have a greater understanding of autoimmune protocol. So that's pretty much what I do is I eat autoimmune protocol and then try to be brewer's yeast free at the same time. I'm not always going to be successful with it, but hey, I'm going to try. So for now, that's pretty much all I got for you. That's all that I eat every day. Like I said, the morning fruit, um, in the middle of the day, usually a meat. At night, it's usually a meat, and I'll usually have fruit or vegetables as the side. If you've looked at my recipes, I have recipes for cauliflower rice. Oh, also I make cauliflower rice bowls. I have so many different recipes, so please check them out. I make them easy for you, believe me, because I would make them easy for myself because I'm not about to waste hours and hours cooking something. Um, I mean, I, I have done it for other people. I have roasted really good fall apart uh, chickens uh, for several hours for two or three hours at a time I have done it but that's like a special thing <laughs> so for the most part I really do try to make things uh, with under an hour um, if anything more than an hour is usually a crock pot meal uh, but pretty much like 75 if not 90 percent of my recipes on the blog can be made within less than 15 minutes 20 minutes tops so I try to make it easy like I said or you know a quick trip to a grocery store is just as easy to and I recommend a lot of special items that are offered from particular stores within their brands and product lines that make auto 
autoimmune protocol so much easier on yourself. I mean, why get fast food when you could just run to the store and get these things because it makes everything so much easier on you. And then you don't res you don't fall into that sort of temptation to eat the fast food that's definitely going to give you a flare up most likely. <laughs> so I give you those options and those are my options pretty much. And I hope that you may find them useful. If not, you know, find your own thing. Let me know what you do down below. Uh, what you pretty much eat in a typical day and definitely consult your doctor or physician if you're interested in uh, the autoimmune protocol process see if they have any other information that you can glean from them for your journey and for your healthcare goals please remember to subscribe to my email list if you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel, of course, because I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things that hopefully can be useful to you on your autoimmune protocol journey. Or if you're just trying to lose weight, because I always lose weight with autoimmune protocol. Um, if you think it'll work for you, if you consulted uh, the necessary medical professionals, and if you are doing it of your own volition, then by all means, I really do hope you accomplish whatever you set out to do. Uh, but please don't sue me, okay? <laughs> That's all I have to say. For now, have a terrific day. Bye.